I guess that calling Lex Luthor a psychopath kind of greatly understates the scale of the problem with this person. You see, since about age nine, Lex Luthor mentally existed as two people. He was the Lex he was in the present, little Lex, and the Lex he was in the future, big Lex. Now, a lot of us fantasize about what we do when we grow up. We have ideas of a career we'd wanna have or a life we'd wanna have, but Lex really only had one goal. Big Lex, the future him, was the most powerful man on earth. Now, this was available to little Lex because he was born into the Luther family. He's Lionel Luther's son. He was born worth $8 billion. But how does a guy take $8 billion and turn it into $800 billion, which is what Lex was valued at by the time he was 30? Well, I'll tell you what, you don't do it legally, and Lex knew that real quick. You see that big Lex he saw in the future? This perfect man who would eventually exist, this ideal version of himself, not only of himself, but of all mankind. The perfect man, Lex Luthor. Alexander, like Alexander the Great. He saw himself as having been born to conquer the world, but not little Lex. Big Lex would be doing that. So little Lex had to get ready. And Lex Luthor's psychology is uniquely built. You can say some of it has to do with parental neglect. You can say psychopathy. You can say a rage disorder. You can say a fundamental lack of empathy that goes beyond what is expected of most sociopaths to a level that Lex has no problem with the entire world dying if it means he's in charge. Yeah, you can put names on what's wrong with Lex Luthor, but they would just be acronyms. They would just be names. I'm telling you the real problem. The real problem is that little Lex is forgiven for doing anything because big Lex will be perfect. That means if you have to step on some people for big Lex to exist, it's worth it because big Lex is perfect. If you have to I don't know, put some people into poverty, pollute the environment. That doesn't matter because Big Lex will eventually fix all that when he controls the world. Let's say you have to kill someone, right? Like there's a problem person who's stopping Big Lex from existing in your estimation. Well, little Lex has to get rid of that person. So like what, murder, 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 really murder, the crime, murder, like it's so bad right? Like animals don't kill each other all the time. Like what we do to cows isn't murder. We kill cows because we want steak. Not because we need steak, but because we want steak. Now that is disgusting. Lex is working on a utopia at some point. At some point, it will be a utopia and he'll be in charge. And for that to happen, you have to get rid of everybody else who wouldn't want Lex in charge. Now, don't you want there to be a utopia? Why are you standing in the way of mankind's progress by being alive so Lex kills you or has you killed? You see what I mean? It's a unique way of viewing the world. I will eventually be perfect, and that means I can be a monster now. You know, humans go through seasons in their lives. Most people grow and evolve, they change. People who say people don't change don't know people because people change a lot. We live in a world where throughout history, many great men and even a few great women have had parts of their lives that are pretty dark or even by most accounts, evil. Lex knows that. So yeah, he was evil most of his life, but it was worth it for when he'll be good. You know, in the history books that are written about him for being the ruler of the earth, hundred years from now, imagine a guy who really believed this and had all the money to make it happen. I'm not talking about like shrewd business dealings. There were a lot of those, a lot of cutthroat operations as LexCorp basically took over every other pharmaceutical company around it and then eventually expanded outwards into technologies and chemical engineering. But that wouldn't have been enough. That doesn't make you more powerful. So of course, by age 12, Lex was working out every day. He was reading as much as possible. He was being trained in self-defense and tactics by the best in the world. He was still two years ahead of a little kid who wouldn't even leave a manor over in Gotham. Not everyone is sad when their parents die. Lex's parents died in a private plane crash. Did he care? Yes, because that meant he got all the money. So he's close to being big Lex. He still cried at his father's funeral uncontrollably. 
They actually began to scream during the funeral, uh, but no footage of that ever got out. You see, there's, there's problems inside Lex because little Lex is bad, but he suffers. Big Lex is invincible and little Lex will do anything to get to that hypothetical state of invincibility. It's a bad way to view the world. It's extremely flawed and extremely crazy. And by the way, not internally coherent inside of Lex Luthor. This guy who by all accounts for how I'm describing him to you should be like a BBC Sherlock style cool sociopath is prone to absolutely losing his temper, to abruptly beginning crying tightly wound into this idea that eventually everything will be fine. There just always seems to be someone in the way of everything being fine. But it goes beyond working out and getting smart Anyone could do that. What Lex wanted was absolute power. And power doesn't just come from money. But what's important to know is that throughout the Kryptonian epic, this story was happening in the background. Lex Luthor, since before Clark Kent ever put on a cape, had his eyes on being Superman. Lex's search for power eventually brought him to a young woman named Zatena Zatera. Zatena Zatera could do magic. Yeah, I'm sorry, there's no like lore she could fucking do magic. Zatanna could, through the force of will, operate things into being. She could create and destroy matter. Lex had hired this guy, John Constantine, who was formerly working with the Vatican on basically hunting down rogue exorcist priests, who by the way, were all crazy, there's no demon. This was basically just a hard drinking Los Angeles private detective who had sort of through his life ended up in all of these weird occult scenarios. He had never seen anything supernatural in his life until he was hired by Lex Luthor to pursue this one person. Now the fate of John Constantine and Zatanna Zatera is actually very complicated. It's tied in with another story that I haven't told you yet called the Society Endangered Species. The issue is Zatanna, long story short, is not good at magic. It's incredibly hard and stressful for her to do it and she doesn't really understand how it works. That means the results were not reliable and sometimes dangerous when Lex began asking her to enchant him, teach him magic, make him more powerful. So Lex had a cyanide capsule installed in her nose. She ever left or got too far away or disobeyed him or his heart stopped. For instance, if she killed him, it would explode and melt her face. Lex kept this girl as a prisoner for 12 years. Now this was not like a Fifty Shades of Grey thing, okay? That's not Lex. He had a wife for show. It was a socialite, Barbara Ann Minerva, smarter than most of the women who were going for Lex's heart and he needed a wife for now and she seemed like she was ready, she wasn't. So he kind of like acquired that and then Z, Zatanna, was this thing he basically kept in a cage. Teach me magic. I can't. Then enjoy the cage. Cause I'm gonna give Zatanna her own video because that video should cross over with Wonder Woman's video. And there's a bunch of threads that come together of just how bad of a guy Lex actually is. But this video isn't really about all that. This video is about one incident that I thought deserved its own pitch from Superman, do it yourself. Superman Do It Yourself is a story that directly follows Agent of Batman, which itself directly followed American Alien. Do It Yourself is, at first, about Clark in response to Lex Luthor debuting a team called the Justice League, which has this like super strong woman on it and this robot that goes super fast and a psychic guy. Lois Lane basically says, hey, this is bad. These can't be the people. They're killing dictators. They're killing criminals. They're clearing the CIA's most wanted list. They're murdering people, Clark. Clark, realizing this is true, starts to put together a team using Edward Nigma and Oliver Queen. I feel like I've talked to you about this. Regardless, the first person they attempt to recruit is a guy named Ted Cord. Again, he's gonna get his own video, but this is the motherfucking Blue Beetle. Ted Cord long story short, was an underachieving officer of the Bloodhaven Police Department, the most corrupt police department basically on earth, until one day Ted discovered armors originally designed for the Batman project over at Wayne Tech by an old crotchety asshole, think Walter Mathel, named Dan Garrett. But Dan died. Ted found his body and he found a Batcave. And instead of laying down, Ted slowly, 
carefully played chess against the dirty cops, using his superhero identity to create the impression that basically a Batman had come to Bloodhaven. But it was just Ted in a big robot suit, outsmarting everyone. Eventually, he was able to blackmail corrupt cops into being good cops. He was able to save the blackmailed cops and flip them until the Bloodhaven Police Department wasn't loyal to the United States law. It was loyal to Ted Cord. What that meant was Ted was able to take the Blue Beetle technologies and funnel them basically into the open, into the city's infrastructure. That meant Bloodhaven went from being a decrepit slum to basically this beautiful utopia. And it happened over the course of four years. People love Bloodhaven. Uh, hey, uh, I'm the governor of New Jersey where Bloodhaven is. You can't have a police force that doesn't answer to the Justice Department. Oh no, that's okay. The Blue Beetle has the Justice Department now too. Okay, send in the Sheriff's Department. No, no, no. They're loyal to the Blue Beetle now too. So we essentially have a foreign shogunate established on American soil. Uh-huh. We're using digital currency there now. It's called Beetlecoin. We don't use money anymore. This is an insurrection. Yeah, but everything's going fine and uh, no one knows who the Blue Beetle is, so. Oh, that's already pretty crazy. There's a lot of Blue Beetle stuff I'm not telling you. It's basically the wire with a superhero as this dude outplays shitty people using the idea that he's a superhero without ever actually ever doing that much super heroics. I'm very excited to share that story with you and I will in detail, but not yet. What matters is, is that Zatanna Zatara, after an incredibly hard life with Luther, ended up basically getting chucked in the garbage by him after effectively faking that she had lost her magical powers at age 22. She was basically dropped off in Gotham as a homeless person with no passport, no ID, and lived as a homeless woman who barely spoke English because Lex wouldn't teach it to her for two years. Zatanna was terrified to show that she was magical again. She believed that the second she used her powers, Luther would swoop in on her. That cyanide thing that had been in her nose, oh, it went off. That's a whole other story, but Satana's entire right side of her face was melted. As she lived on the street, she eventually got skin conditions. She was only 23, but she looked 50. And then finally, one day, she saw Superman on TV. This wasn't Luther's world. This was Superman's world. And Zatanna, in her mind, hit a point that's not exactly heroic. With great power comes great responsibility. To what, be silent? Not in Superman's world. I'm Zatanna fucking Zatara. Zatanna fixed her face, bing, magic. Fixed her body, bing, I'm a Victoria's Secret model. Fixed her voice, bing, I'm Lady Gaga. And suddenly, this girl from a hovel in the Eastern Bloc became an international celebrity within a week because she walked into Metropolis and went like this. Hey everybody, I'm fucking magic. She sought out a guy named Jimmy Olsen who was known for interacting with superheroes and supervillains and basically gave him the ride of his life. She floated him around, manifested thousands of dollars. Being homeless is a lot of time to practice at that little magical skill. Practice she could never do with Lex because Lex was always watching. And the second she did something impressive, he'd swoop in. Well, not anymore. The thing is, is if you get you know, 20 million social media followers within one week, including multiple cults starting around you online because you are a hot, magical woman who's basically appeared from nowhere and is now going, I'm an entertainer. She's doing that to fuck with Lex. And oh my God, does it work? You see, the thing is at this point, Lex has Wonder Woman brainwashed, The Flash blackmailed and Manchester Black paid, which is all he needs. So Lex, seeing Zatanna rise in fame and power, infuriates him. The thing is, Lex has people in the government. He can get you anywhere. He can send people to kill you, a very specific set of people who I'll tell you about in a moment, and he can send them anywhere. So where does Zatanna go? Bloodhaven. The story of Zatanna and the Blue Beetle, the father-daughter relationship that I really like about two lonely, hurt and hurting people finding each other and supporting each other relentlessly. I'm not going to tell it right here. I'm going to tell the end of that story uh, without spoiling it, which is fun. 
but I'm going to tell you just this one thing from Superman Do It Yourself, which I've actually described in here before. But now I'm really going to tell you. I don't know if how closely you're following all these. There's eventually going to be like a full length kind of animated movie kind of that comes on this channel, but that's a while away. So until then, let's talk about how Lex Luthor invented superheroes. Okay, he didn't do it on purpose. Lex in his mind knew that King Arthur was backed up by the Knights of the Round Table. Luthor was thinking the way Clark would years later, but hadn't gotten there yet. You see, Luther was only 15 when he first met a guy named Floyd Lawton. <laughs> Floyd Lawton was a private security guy who had been in the Marines and gotten kicked out and then had been at a private security firm and gotten kicked out because Floyd Lawton is an asshole. Now, when I say someone's an asshole like Floyd Lawton, I'm not talking about he's like a psychopath. No, Floyd Lawton's a bad guy. His ideas about the world are really scary. They're also extremely pragmatic. That is that we live in a capitalist society where money is valued more than human life. You ever want proof of that? Notice that food costs money. Yeah, something that fuels you, you need an imaginary thing to get it. You either have to wait in a long line or you have to pay. So what exactly is the problem with murdering someone? Floyd's logic is flawed. Luther was fascinated with Floyd Lawton, even though they'd just been randomly assigned. He was randomly assigned as a security guy because he was the best shot at the whole company. And that's what Luther wanted because this wasn't actually a security guy. This was an assassination mission. He intentionally set up a situation in which someone was going to try or seem to try to take his life whereupon his bodyguard would then be forced to shoot them. The thing is, Floyd wasn't forced. Floyd murdered this person in cold blood once he understood that it was what Lex wanted. And Lex found a friend for life. Lex Luther can't hire assassins. He has to hire the assassins, the world's best assassins. And that gave Luther an idea. The world's best assassins aren't people, they're ideas. People can die, people can fail. Floyd Lawton could go on a mission for Lex to kill someone and he could get killed. If he didn't have Floyd Lawton, then if he gets Floyd Lawton to kill a lot of people and he builds up this big reputation for Floyd Lawton and then Floyd Lawton fucking gets shot in the head or something, Lex is shit out of luck. That's not a good investment. How does that help Big Lex? You know what would help Big Lex? Take Floyd Lawton, put $500 million into training him to be not just the best shot at a company, not just the best shot in the military, but the best shot in the world, and then arming him with an additional $200 million of technology to make it almost impossible for him to miss. Now that doesn't work, obviously. All you've done is made Floyd Lawton really dangerous. And Lex doesn't need Floyd Lawton to be really dangerous. He just needs Floyd Lawton to obey him. So how do you control an artist of death? Well, how do you control any artist? You control the art. You buy the brand. Lex Luthor, before he ever met Superman, before he ever appeared in our story, took Floyd Lawton into a room and showed him a red and white costume. It had one eye, a cyclopean red lens. It looked like an alien or something from hell. Have you ever Googled Deadshot? No, not Will Smith. Deadshot. Lex made Deadshot, so if Floyd died, he could just replace him. Floyd was over the moon. He had money for life. You have to kill a few kids. You have to kill someone's wife. You have to shoot up a few business dinners. Who the fuck gives a shit? I'm working for the richest man in the world. What I'm doing can't be wrong or Lex Luthor wouldn't be the richest man in the world, right? Everybody else is wrong. Laws are wrong. Governments are wrong. Morality is wrong. Lex Luthor is giving me unlimited money to do what I love, which is kill people he's who I'm listening to for the rest of my life. So accidentally in becoming Deadshot, Lex Luthor bought Floyd Lawton's loyalty. But of course that's not nearly enough for Lex. He wanted more. So he started creating other assassins. His other idea is a female martial artist called Lady Shiva, a hulking Russian brute with a flamethrower called the KG Beast, a knife flinging lunatic called Brutal. These ideas, were good, but it was hard to find anyone as good as Floyd. These people kept getting killed and replaced because Lex would keep the costumes or rebuild them. Even a man named Slade Wilson, who on his own probably would have been the best assassin on earth, but was still working for criminals, put on a costume 
because he was so inspired by seeing what was happening with these other assassins. It's not enough to kill people anymore. What's your brand? Slade did not like this and vowed never to work with Luther again. Floyd confronted Slade and was basically like, hey man, anyone who's not Luther's friend is Luther's enemy. Slade was like, Floyd, we've known each other 15 years. You're in a costume right now. I'm in a costume right now. There's people in costumes on TV. Luther wants to be one of these freaks, Floyd. Luther doesn't want to be one of these freaks. Luther's building it all, Slade. You're the one who's behind. No, I'm not behind. Luther is a madman. Floyd, you must understand that. This team he has you on isn't an elite strike force. It's a suicide squad. Luther's enemies will only become more powerful and he will keep sending you after them until you're killed. Just because you're the one that's still standing doesn't mean you'll still be standing forever, Floyd. Floyd didn't listen to Deathstroke, Slade Wilson. Eventually, Floyd would hear about Slade Wilson getting an arrow through the neck and then kicked out a window. That's how he died. Oliver Queen did that. Check the Green Arrow video. So I guess he was the one on the Suicide Squad, right? Fifth Lady Shiva? Right? Sixth? KG Beast? Like, that's the guy on the Suicide Squad, not me. Lex Luthor has a public strike team called the Justice League, which kills criminals. And then he has a private strike team called the Suicide Squad, which kills everyone else. And now where was I? Where was I? Oh, that's right. The United States government is pretty unhappy that a separate nation has formed in one American city. Still have one more thing to tell you about, which is Freeze Test Run. But Freeze Test Run actually starts in a really interesting way. You see LexCorp is having this big parade for a foreign ambassador. Lex is using this parade to debut something called Kite Man. Kite Man is a flying guy. Clark! Can't believe it. This guy has a giant kite on his back and he's flying around. Clark, basically when he flies, it's exhausting. It's like running at full speed. So this guy being able to zip around, Clark is like, whoa. He keeps trying to fly up to the guy as he's flying over Metropolis and go, hey, hey, did you build this? LexCorp built this for you? Hey, talk to me. But the guy's wearing this helmet. He won't talk to Clark. Kite Man was Floyd Lawton in disguise. He killed the ambassador's entire family, Scarface style. Holy shit. Clark doesn't have PTSD for that. He doesn't feel responsible because he isn't. And Clark's main superpower is being an emotionally healthy person. But Clark did, it always has bothered him that he was next to Kite Man. He was next to the murderer and he didn't do anything. And it's been at the back of his mind. Now he knows it isn't his fault. He knows it's Lex, but at the back of his mind. So Clark in Freeze Testron becomes obsessed with finding out more about Lex. What matters is Clark knows who Floyd Lawton is. He knows what the Suicide Squad is. He just has no way of getting to them. He has no way of stopping them. And Clark's main thing he does as Superman is not fighting or stopping crimes. Batman got him doing that. The main shit Clark was doing was humanitarian. If there was a standoff or a police chase, yeah, he'd fly down and land and basically end it by being there. But he wasn't out with a police radio just like, what am I gonna do next? He was in with a fucking paramedic radio. Oh, you have a heart attack? You hear noise, there's a guy there, he's smiling at you, you're at the hospital. That's Superman. You're in a fiery nine car collision on the freeway. You're trapped, gasoline is burning as fire creeps towards you and the fire's out. And there's a guy there, he's looking in the car and he goes, wow, your car's fucked up. And then he peels open the car and he helps you out. That's Superman. None of this punching bank robber shit. Leave that to the mentally ill and the masked. Reason Clark ends up putting on literally pro wrestler blue pants with red boots at the end of Freeze Do It Yourself is because he wants to appear friendly. There's a good moment in Freeze Test Run near the end where Victor's lost his mind and has frozen some people and then tries to freeze Clark and it doesn't work. And then Clark goes, listen to me, you don't wanna do this. You're not a super villain, Mr. Freeze. Victor, I just like that moment. So now we're finally here. So now we're finally here. All our pieces are in place. Bloodhaven, the Blue Beetle and Zatanna, the Suicide Squad, Clark's Society. We're there, we arrived. I finally get to tell you the thing, Jesus Christ. 
Lex Luthor uses his connections in the White House to get a state of martial law declared outside of Bloodhaven. An ultimatum is issued. Surrender the city, surrender the Blue Beetle armor, surrender all Blue Beetle technology, including the bug. Oh, and surrender control of a United States city back to the United States, maybe? Blue Beetle? Just, just a thought. I mean, you seem to be doing well with your perfect police department, your perfect city infrastructure, and... Oh, the census says it's the happiest city in America, and everyone's happy there, and they use Beetle coin, and no, the United States government says no, because Lex Luthor said no, but why did Lex Luthor say no? Because Zatanna is in Bloodhaven. Fuck the Blue Beetle, he doesn't matter. He wants Zatanna dead. She doesn't get to post online her doing magic after years of him telling her to do magic. He doesn't want the magic anymore, she's fucking gone. Here comes the Suicide Squad. The citizens of Bloodhaven stage a massive protest. The thing is, the police of Bloodhaven also stage a massive protest because no one wants to go back to the way it was. So now the National Guard surrounds the city. No one can get in or out. The Blue Beetle is about to go to war with America. Ted Cord is a patriot. He's a conservative. He was trying to build the perfect American city. Did it end up being a socialist utopia based around a futuristic technology? Yes, but he did it as a Republican. Don't get the fucking National Guard shoot me. What the fuck? I mean, is he breaking the law? Yeah. So Superman. And he doesn't support a whole fucking city on his back, so... Blue Beetle. Fuck yeah. The thing is, the National Guard and the protest clashing is the least of Ted's problems. Zatanna is nearly killed by the KG Beast in her apartment. Yeah, she can do magic, but she can't do magic. She can't fucking fight a guy with a flamethrower who's just fucking trying to torch everything from the outside by surprise. She's badly burned. She heals herself, but doing that almost knocks her out because magic takes carbs and calories because it's energy you're burning. Ted barely manages to get her, but the blue beetle armor and all of the tech and the bug are all being used to help control the riots and make sure this whole thing doesn't end up as a fucking revolution, a fucking shit show massacre. So Ted, takes her back to his house, which is a brownstone in the base of which is the beetle cave. Other people live in this fucking brownstone. And you know who's there right now? The fucking Suicide Squad. Ted with a shotgun, Zatanna on his shoulder. Basically no country for old men's against the most badass, dangerous assassins in the DC universe. Well, my DC universe. He's trapped in his bat cave. But when he opens the door, guess who's there? Riddle me this. Why is a cop on the run from the law? It's Edward Nigma, and with him is a guy named Clark Kent. Eddie basically says, I'm part of a team of exceptional people. You're in a difficult situation. Meanwhile, Ted is like, you're the fucking Riddler. I saw you on TV. You murdered the CEO of Queen Tech. Riddler literally says, Pobody's nerfing. Ted's like, no, I don't trust you and I don't trust anyone. I'm trying to save this girl. They are wrecking my city. They are burning everything I built to the ground. I won't turn to a criminal. And Eddie goes, would you turn to Superman? Ted was inspired in a lot of ways by Superman. He was inspired to break out of his shell. That's what led him to start the Blue Beetle Project. There's no way Superman would ever work with you. Oh, hi, I'm, I'm Clark Kent. I, Ted, I'm, I love, I, you know, I watch a Blue Beetle. I just see you online and stuff, and I think it's so cool, and I just have so many questions. Who the fuck is this guy? No, Ted, I do, I do, I do Superman. You do Superman? Yeah, I do Super, I am Super. I'm Superman, on, like on TV, I'm, I just am, I am Super, I'm Superman. I am Superman, I'm Superman. Eddie is sitting there like this. Superman is an idiot? No, I'm not an idiot. Hey, fuck you, man. Bang, 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 bang. Noises, gunshots from above. Holy shit, the Suicide Squad is just shooting through the apartment. Meanwhile, the National Guard is breaching the protest lines. The United States is invading the city. It's gonna be a fucking massacre. Ted, realizing that things are out of control, presses a button in the Blue Beetle Batcave that basically hard locks all the Blue Beetle technology. So all of his cops are now basically unarmed. He said he was gonna do this if shit went down. So they all peacefully surrender, which means the National Guard rolls right in. But they're not gonna fucking get there in time to save the people in this building from a team of assassins who've literally killed tens of thousands of people. 
they're going to murder everyone in this building if they don't find Ted. Eddie notices on the security screens in the Blue Beetle's lair, dead shot. If you know Riddler's story, you know that Floyd's costume when he came to kill Riddler is what inspired Eddie to put on a series of more and more garish costumes and become the Riddler. Eddie sees Floyd and goes, Clark. Clark turns, sees him on the screens. Kite man. Floyd Lawton enters the cellar hallway to find Clark Kent with his hands raised like this. Well, Mr. Lawton, I'm aware you work for Lex Luthor. I don't want to fight, okay? You've hurt enough people today. People have died. It doesn't have to go this way. You can just leave and nothing bad will happen, okay? The Blue Beetle is not your problem, right? Please listen to me. If we can just talk, I'm sure we can find a way. If Luther's manipulating you, I can... Floyd shoots Clark Kent in the head. Clark Kent down on the ground. Floyd walks up to the door of the cave and starts pulling it. And then he hears a noise behind him. And Clark Kent's standing up. He takes the bullet and he peels it off his forehead. Wow, Floyd, this is an artillery round. That's why it's stuck instead of bouncing. Floyd is staring at him. So this would have blown my whole head off, huh, Floyd? Clark starts to walk towards Floyd Lawton, who begins firing all of his guns. The bullets are just ricocheting off, slowly tattering away Clark's clothes to reveal a big old red S. Luther's not watching this, okay? Luther has to have total deniability. So he has no idea what's happening. But you know who understands what's happening right about now? Floyd. And you know what his answer is? Bang, 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 bang. Clark's walking towards Floyd as plaster explodes around him. Bullets, Floyd? Really, bullets, cape down. Bullets is your answer to everything. You just killed me in cold blood if I was Clark Kent. Explain to me why I shouldn't do the same to you. Floyd's like, shit, ducks into an apartment, shooting through the walls, higher capacity rounds, flaming rounds, fucking grenades, blowing up the whole fucking bottom of this thing as Ted quickly evacuates the last people on this floor. Superman just fucking blurs across the room, grabs Floyd and says, say one thing, say anything that makes me rethink killing you. Floyd goes, Superman on premises, attack! Lady Shiva versus Superman. This guy was trained by Batman. He's actually blocking strikes instead of just knocking her out. Listen to me, I've done research on you. I don't wanna hurt you, Poon. No, he's not that good. He starts getting fucking rocked in the face by Lady Shiva. She kicks him back, throws an explosive. The explosive's gonna go down a hallway, kill a family. Clark just catches it, beans it right back into her. She fucking blows up, dead. Clark's like, before Clark can even process that he just blew someone up, he's completely on fire because KG Beast is blasting him with the flamethrower. How's this for an image? Superman, completely lit on fire, falls down the center of a stairwell and then rises back up. KG Beast is like, oh shit. Floyd Lawton on a lower floor has a flaming Superman basically fly past him. Superman grabs the KG Beast. KG Beast tries to fry him again. Fire goes back on him, explodes. That whole floor is on fire. Clark's being attacked by Brutal. Brutal's throwing knives. Boom, boom, boom. They're bouncing off. But what is Clark doing? Literally ignoring him and evacuating the people on the floor. Finally, Clark's having so many knives thrown at him that one of them glances and nicks one of the people he's evacuating. A knife comes, Clark catches it, fucking throws it back, hits Brutal in the head, boom, dead. That's how Superman does it. How's that, Zack Snyder? Violent enough? Clark's like, Jesus Christ, but he floats the last guy down. So he took out the whole fucking team. The Suicide Squad just got homicided. The building's evacuated and on fire. The fucking National Guard's closing in and Floyd Lawton stumbles out the front of the building. Floyd's been through fire and explosions. All of his guns are empty. First time that's ever happened. He just has his one real zinger left. It's a fucking anti-aircraft round. It's designed to shoot down planes. He has a thing on his wrist. Clark comes down, burnt, fucked up, and goes, Floyd! And Floyd turns. Whole Suicide Squad's dead. Floyd doesn't know what to do. National Guard with tanks and armored vehicles approaching. Uh-oh. You still waiting for me to say something? Because I'm not going to say it. You're going to lose. Luther's going to kill you, Kent. And Clark goes, what type of person shoots a kid, Floyd? I just don't get it. And Floyd goes, yeah, what the fuck would you know? I'm rich. You're just some guy in a costume. Boom!
Boom! Anti-aircraft round. Clark bitch slaps that shit straight through Deadshot's head. His head's gone. Boom! Dead. The National Guard pulls up around a burning building and a lot of bodies. But Superman's long gone, as is the Blue Beetle, Edward Nigma, and Zatanna Zatara. Clark kills very few people throughout the Kryptonian epic. In pretty much every situation, Clark will try to use words instead of violence. Every situation. Because in most situations, violence is not stakes for him. He can't be harmed. So how things played out with the Suicide Squad really was their own fault. Clark gave them a lot of chances. I mean, how, ma I mean, how many cops do you know who would get shot and keep trying to talk to a criminal? Clark's a really good guy. But he has a line. I guess everybody has a line. Except Batman. Because he's mentally ill.